Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are reacting to an interview by Gingo Bioworks CEO Jason Kelly explaining what programmable DNA is. This is back from September 2021. I think it'll give everybody a good understanding of how a CEO thinks of the business. I'm going to be making a lot more audio and video content around uh, the CEO and how he thinks of the business. I cannot say how big of a fan I am of Jason Kelly listening to him. It's an interesting person to talk. He, there's certain CEOs that just have like, they just talk about the business and stuff. Then there's others that are actual founders that actually really believe in the long-term vision and potential and feel that there's such a big massive opportunity there that are actually excited when they speak and when they explain. And they know how to explain in a way that's consumable for the public, which I think is also a really, really hard thing to do uh, if you're CEO of a company, much less a genomics company that's a little bit difficult to understand. So let's get into that right now, and let's hear how he first explained it back in September 2021. Congratulations on going public today. Yeah, thanks, Morgan. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the company itself, um, because of the way this has been described, Ginkgo seeks to make programming the DNA of cells as easy as programming computers. I mean, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. It also sounds very hard. What does it entail? Okay, so the core idea is inside of every cell, right, every plant, animal, microbe, is digital code in the form of DNA, mm -hmm. right? It's ATCs and Gs, not zeros and ones like in a computer, but you can read that code, DNA sequencing, like genomics, and you can write it with DNA printing. And so what we do at Ginkgo is we have a big 200,000 square foot lab in Boston where we read and write genetic code to program cells for customers, and then we make money kind of like Apple would in the App Store. If we so first of all, very sort of interesting concept, right? Right there. Zeros and ones are bits on a computer, right? And there's code to be able to understand and translate those bits. ATCs and Gs are the quote unquote bits of your DNA. If you remember in high school when you studied biology and DNA and A, C, Ts, and Gs, they all kind of go together and they have to mix with each other. Um, that is programmable and you can write that code using technology. And Gingo Bioworks has a big, big factory that says, okay, let's take this programmable, essentially code on these DNAs and let's use technology to be able to actually make business applications of these in terms of making new ways those cells and that DNA could ultimately be used. We program a cell for you, we get a royalty on the sales of the products that come from that cell. That's the business model. Yeah, and of course that was exactly my next question, which is this idea of cell programming. I mean, with many biotechs, I think historically yeah. it's been, you create a product or a suite of products and then you patent them, you sell them. You're taking a much more horizontal approach, almost like the way we see AWS or one of the big cloud players targeting a variety of industries. Yeah, 100%. So, so the, the model is actually, yeah, stolen from tech. I mean, I think this is why we're the, you know, with $1.6 billion, the largest biotech IPO in history, is because we're, we're not bringing a drug out to market. What we're bringing out is a platform, right? It is like an operating system or, or an AWS or an app store. And the idea is if we're successful, all of those apps should ultimately run on Ginkgo's platform. That, that's really what we're hoping to achieve. Okay. Now, this is incredibly important to understand. I didn't get Ginkgo Bioworks for so long, which is why I wasn't a buyer of them, because I didn't understand uh, what they were actually doing. When I hear biotech, I think drugs. I and mean, that's not necessarily wrong, but in the context of stocks, I'm like, okay, if that drug fails, and, or if the FDA doesn't approve it, uh, or if it just has bad trials or something, then the stock is in the gutter, because at that point, then the drug has no value, and then, you know, why would investors... Uh, want to buy a stock with a, with a drug that has no value. But if you build a platform, that's fundamentally different, right? If, especially if you build a horizontal platform. Now, that doesn't mean that the drugs that Gingo Bioworks' platform uh, are run on don't have to be successful. Obviously, they have to be successful for Gingo Bioworks to get the majority of the real revenue they're going to be able to um, um, recognize. But the, the point is they're not bringing a drug to market. And the, the, the results of the company are not exclusively tied to their quote unquote drug being successful. It's more so can they build a platform service for hundreds of millions of one day platforms, apps, just like TikTok and Instagram run on the app store to be able to run on their platform. And if they can figure out how to make it as easy as using their app store, just like it's really easy to put an app on, on the iOS app store. It literally takes like a couple of days to be honest, to just get it up there then there is going to be a massive new opening of the market for programmable DNA and for people that want to do genomic sequencing using Gingo Bioworks' platform, using their quote-unquote AWS type of service. And that's going to make the platform a lot more valuable. And then the probability of certain drugs just winning and Gingo getting, bio and Gingo getting uh, revenue from those drugs or equity in those drugs because that's their business model. They take a piece of equity or they take royalties if the drug is successful. 
means that they just have a lot of shots at bat for a lot of those drugs to work. And if some of those hit, then they get to recognize a lot of revenue. But the point is, you know, not every business is successful that runs on AWS, but Netflix was. And now every time you watch Netflix, AWS makes money because all of Netflix's content library runs on AWS because they offer the data storage and compute for Netflix to be able to operate and not have physical servers and use the cloud infrastructure that Amazon created. If DNA can do that for the biology, genomics, programmable DNA space, I think that's really interesting and there's a market opportunity there. Okay, so that business, the cell programming business is basically your so-called foundry business. You also have another business that's focused on biosecurity that's much more tied to COVID, for example, testing in schools, yes. being one of those key pieces. That's been growing particularly fast. Yeah. Um, so how are you looking at the growth of those two businesses, uh, not only yeah. through the rest of this year, but beyond. I mean, how sustainable is that biosecurity piece of the business? Now, the biosecurity stuff, for those who don't know, is basically when the COVID pandemic happened, Gingo Bioworks was able to create, just like computer technology creates cybersecurity, right? Google invests in cybersecurity. Gingo invested in uh, biosecurity. And they did a lot, they got a lot of revenue from having COVID tests uh, throughout different schools and populations throughout the United States. So the question here is, okay, if COVID is over, how is that biosecurity business still going to be able to expand and grow? Yeah, no, it's a good problem to have to have two fast growing businesses. Yeah. So, so yeah, we've, we've signed about uh, four, more than $400 million of contracts with states around the country in the last few months around K-12 testing. And the way we look at this is if we're going to make it as easy to program cells as it is to program computers, just like Google would invest in cybersecurity, we should be investing in biosecurity. And what COVID has shown us is we're not really prepared for this sort of thing. And so, so part of that business is the testing. The, the other work we've done, we just announced a partnership with Aldevron, one of the big mRNA vaccine manufacturers, where we gave them a program cell that improved the production of one of the ingredients for mRNA vaccines tenfold. And so, you know, mm. we'll get royalties on that just like we normally do, but it also speeds the scale and, and productivity of mRNA vaccines for biosecurity. Okay. So the pandemic, at least right now, and where that part of the business is concerned, uh, continues to be a growth driver. In terms of looking across the broader platform and the different industries you work with, where do you see the other greatest growth opportunities? Yeah, so I think you'll see us actually do more in therapeutics. We announced a deal with Biogen earlier this year in the area of gene therapy. But if you look at the kind of project Ginkgo does, you know, we, we've worked with a company called Kronos up in Canada, uh, Zaltria's JV, that does uh, cannabis production. So we engineer a cell to produce cannabinoids so you don't have to grow the fields. We work in animal-free meat with a company called Motif Foodworks. We work in antibiotics with Roche. Like the rain. So this is interesting. Those are three different use cases. He talked about cannabis. He talked about animal beet. Uh, he talked about working in different areas of farms and antibiotics. I mean, these are so many different, and this is why I'm attracted to the company. I, if, I mean, again, if the company is successful, there's so many different verticals they could operate in. And if DNA programming is in its infancy, which that is a fact, DNA programming is in its infancy. The best we've got out of DNA programming is the Impossible Burger. And, and there's, there's future things you can watch on how exactly DNA sequencing act allows an Impossible Burger to taste like real meat. That's all DNA sequencing. That's all programmable DNA. That, that's all what we've created from this new sort of era, just like when, you know, in, in, in the 90s when computers came out, all we had was like America Online. And there were so many, now we have TikTok. I mean, there's such a big evolution. There's so many market opportunities to build things on top of these platforms and we're in its infancy. And if DNA controls the basis for how synthetic, and they're not gonna be the only one, but if synthetic biology applications are truly built on top of their platform at scale, uh, and they have all these different verticals they fit into, like the ones he mentioned, cannabis, antibiotics, animal meat, then there's a lot more that are going to exist, more that are going to help with diseases. I mean, there's just a lot of opportunity here. And that's gets that gets me excited about the potential of this investment. It's not that it's not a risky, it's that the risk could be asymmetrical or the reward could be asymmetrical compared to the risk. The range of, of places you can apply this is really broad. And so the thing I'm most excited coming up, startups, small companies. You should be able to launch a new company on Ginkgo's platform without building a lab. You can just have an idea for a cell program, we'll huh. do the biotech, and you can commercialize. And that's exactly like what the folks at Motif did. They're, they're food scientists, they're, they're expert food people, right? They're making like impossible burgers. They didn't have to have any biotech people, Ginkgo handled all that. It's like outsourcing to the cloud if you were starting a website, same idea. So startups is really where I wanna grow. Uh, and again, that's also interesting because, like I said, if there's a lot more companies that are using Ginkgo, just like a lot of startups use Apple's iOS or AWS, that's a big market opportunity for a lot of different small companies to see DNA Ginkgo as like the main driver. Their stock price is not accurate, by the way. It's three dollars now. It's not thirteen dollars. This is twenty twenty one. But you get the point. So that's one of the interesting things to understand about Ginkgo Bioworks and how it operates. To me, I'm beginning to understand it as a platform. And I'm going back through some of these old videos of the CEO talking about it because I'm trying to see what 
he was talking about a long time ago how he was explaining the company, how they were bringing it to the market and explaining it to the public uh, shareholders. They raised about $1.6 billion from their IPO, valued at about 13 14 or no, it was about $15 billion uh, market cap. One of the largest biotech IPOs ever because they're not selling a drug. They are selling a platform with the potential to make many, 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 many more drugs and applications on top of that platform. And if they own royalties and equity within all of those drugs that are created, the downstream revenue of that 5, 10, 15 years from now, it can be really big. <laughs> and so it's it's exciting to see a company like that um, be in its infancy. And, you know, now the valuation is also very exciting as well. At three bucks, they IPO'd at like 15 bucks. There's a different way, I think, uh, the company, or they, sorry, they spacked at like 10, 11, 12 bucks, and they went up to 13, 14. Um, there's, a diff there's a different asymmetrical return opportunity here for DNA Ginkgo Bioworks. So more content coming soon on this company. I just wanted to give a little bit of an interview from a while ago. Jason Kelly's done a decent amount of interviews, so I'm going to be reacting to a lot of them because I want to dig deep and understand how this guy was actually explaining this company a long time ago. But that is the horizontal platform approach to Ginkgo Bioworks. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I'll see you in the next one.